Hello and welcome to our weekly news roundup for Monday the 27th of August to Sunday the 2nd of September. Coming up this week, Metal Gear Solid 5, PlayStation 4 and Skyrim DLC, unless you own a PS3. Our biggest news this week is the full announcement of Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes, the open world prequel to Hideo Kojima's essential stealth action series. And you can click here for a full rumour roundup complete with details about the upcoming movie. And no, thank God it's not being directed by Yuri Boll. Bethesda announced fresh DLC for Skyrim this week in the wholesome shape of Heartfire, an expansion for the 360 which lets you construct your own home and, more creepily, adopt random orphans. Click here for our full child caption analysis of the trailer. For PS3 owners wondering where their DLC is, there's good news and bad news. The good news is that Bethesda have confirmed that Heartfire is not the reason for the ongoing delay to the PlayStation release of Dawnguard. The bad news? The actual reason for the delay is that the PS3 version is mangled like a stepped on sweet roll. A post on the official blog explains that Bethesda have encountered a problem during development, even suggesting that the Vampy DLC may never see release on Sony's machine. If only there was some clue as to all those potential PS3 problems. Anyway, if you still need some Skyrim to brighten your day, click here to watch all of Season 1 of Rags to Riches, including the gripping season finale. Please keep sending us more of your ideas for shows, and stay tuned to CVG for Andy Kelly's DayZ show in the near future. In news that should come as no shock to anyone that played it, the team behind Spec Ops The Line revealed this week that they were forced by 2K to add in the multiplayer mode. In a rare show of frankness, lead designer Corey Davis described the tagged on features as an overall failure. Other words he used include raped, cancerous, and bullshit just not in the same sentence. Don't sugarcoat it for us, Corey. And speaking of naughty words, Guild Wars 2 studio ArenaNet have taken a stern stance against antisocial behaviour and abusive language in their new MMO, with players who violate the rules facing a ban of up to three days. In a daring move to explain the studio's decision, an online support representative engaged the game's community on what might be the funniest Reddit thread ever. Most of it's too rude to repeat, but we can confirm that if you call yourself very big ballsack, you're going to get banned. And in other MMO news, the Mists of Pandaria patch for World of Warcraft has gone live. As if Kung Fu Pandas weren't enough of a clue, the new update represents a wholesale simplification of the dominant online RPG. Talents and abilities have been streamlined, and players will soon be able to use the Battle Pets, the Blizzard equivalent of Pokemon. Congratulations to Blizzard for fusing two of the most addictive games ever made into one life-eating mutant hybrid. In tech news, Sony is to begin the phased launch of its 4K LCD TVs by the end of 2012. Clocking in at a whopping 84 inches with a resolution of 3840 by 2160 the HyperTelly boasts four times the pixels of Full HD. Crucially, this supports previous reports that the PlayStation 4 will use a similar Ultra HD display. Click here to see our PlayStation 4 rumour roundup. We'll be here high-fiving ourselves for being so damn perceptive. Keeping things next gen, EA Labels president, because that's a thing now, Frank Gibbo has speculated that both Microsoft and Sony will release next gen consoles in 2013. Gibbo claims to have seen the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 successes firsthand, and the executive told Bloomberg TV that we can expect new machines within the next year. If you're in any doubt about that comment, EA has already committed to investing $80 million in next-gen games during the current business year. That's about 10 days profit to them. Square Enix has announced a new cloud gaming service that enables players to stream console quality games straight from the web. The service, named Core Online, can be accessed via Chrome, Firefox, or if you're a complete idiot, Internet Explorer or whatever. And it will allow users to purchase entire games like Hitman Blood Money, Lara Croft and the Guardian of Light, and Tomb Raider Underworld. Users can also opt to play free, ad-supported content with the game time earned by watching additional video content. Doomed online ventures, you say? Let's talk about OnLive. Founder Steve Perlman this week announced his departure from the cloud gaming service. Shortly before shredding all his documents and diving out of the window, Perlman asked users to give the online team a chance. You know, in much the same way he didn't when two weeks ago he fired 200 employees without severance pay, before transferring the company's assets to a new company. Best of luck, Steve! Click here to see Perlman talking about why consoles will definitely die out, maybe while throwing rotten tomatoes at your monitor. Finally, Brendan McNamara of LANR fame has released the first shot of his new game, the horribly named next-gen title, Whore of the Orient. The screenshot doesn't tell us much, but the accompanying blurb sets the scene as the most corrupt and decadent city on the planet, where anything can be had or done for the right price. There's a Rockstar joke in there somewhere, but to be honest, we're too afraid to tell it. That's all we've got for you this week. Don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe, and stay tuned to CVG for a week of new shows and features. We'll see you again next Friday for another news roundup.